weather always stimulates productivity. You know? <laughs> yeah. Just put that up. I don't. Probably yeah, they're still built. They're still interior stuff. Okay, so here we are at the Red Salmon Cannery here in Naknek, Alaska. I'll give you a little look around the uh, grounds here. There's a lot packed into this little area and uh, most of it is quite old. There's one new structure here that's new for the year. This building here, that's a new bunkhouse where the processors uh, sleep and live when they're not working. Most processors are working 16 hour shifts here, so they're working most of the time. And uh, yeah, it's kind of like a little village here. Most of these structures are all bunkhouses to house all the employees here. And this is the mess hall here, this big building where everyone eats. Hi. <laughs> Thanks guys. And then over here is the boat yard where all the fishermen store their boats uh, throughout the winter. So they're all showing up now, uh, getting their boats in order to get put in the water to get ready for the fishing season. Really the whole look of this place, you would think it would be abandoned. All the buildings are very run down and old and just kind of have been patched together over the years to keep things up and running. That's just the nature of this cannery. They're not all like this. This is uh, just how this one is. It's kind of got its own little infrastructure here. There is no water like, you know, municipal water, or anything like that. I'll show you here in a second. There's a little lake and a water tower. They pump the water out of the lake. That supplies water for the whole operation here. And uh, also same as power. There's a big giant diesel generator that supplies the whole place with power. So that's pretty vital that that is up and running all of the time. And uh, well, yeah, we'll start off by showing you the bunkhouses here. Naknek, Alaska is quite remote. Um, you can't drive here from, say, somewhere like Anchorage, Alaska. Everything has to either be flown in or shipped in on a boat. So that contributes to a lot of the state of how things are here. It's really hard to just get a lot of the basic stuff for repairing and working on things. So for a lot of people, that work environment would be very frustrating. Um, but you have to be really good at improvising. That's just the nature of working here. So here is one of the bunkhouses that uh, I've been staying in here. This is my third year working here. I've always stayed in this. They call it Motel 6. We'll go upstairs and show you what the average room looks like. There's showers in there and bathrooms and washer and dryer. And for my position working on a tender boat, there's kind of three phases of the job. We show up, the boat is out of the water, it needs some work, and we will be doing a lot of the work on it ourselves, as well as they have hired shipwrights that come in and do a lot of the big work on the boat. So we will spend about a week staying in the bunkhouses here, eating at the mess hall, and then once the, water, the boat gets put in the water, we'll actually move on to the boat, which is just down on the docks here, just down below. The Naknek River is just down there. We'll take a look at that in a second. So the first phase is staying in the bunkhouse, driving over to where the boat is out of the water and working on it. And then the second phase is continuing to work on the boat. Once it's in the water, we bring it over to the docks, tie up at the docks, spend another couple weeks working on the boat, getting it ready to buy fish. And then the third phase is when we're actually anchored out in river and buying fish actively from the fishermen. All right, so we're up in one of the bunk houses now. They're all set up pretty much the same. Multiple rooms and then a community bathroom with showers. And then there are multiple rooms that usually are two bunks to a room. We'll see if there's any open ones. Yep, typical bunk house room here, two beds. And they usually give you a little dresser to store your clothes and stuff and coat rack and all that. And you do have a window. You can get some fresh air in here. And that's the Naknek River down there. There's a laundry room as well. Once we move on to the boat, we actually send our laundry up and there's someone here that that's their job. They do our laundry for us. But our first week here, we're usually doing our own laundry in the bunkhouse. So we'll head on out. We'll show you where the water tower and lake is, where all the water for this place comes. And then we'll check out the big generator house. 
It is lunch break right now, so I'm kind of running around on a little bit of free time left on my lunch break to uh, show you guys around the place. All right, we'll take a little walk over to the lake and water tower. This is where all the water that is supplied to this whole cannery comes from. So a little bit more about how this commercial fishing works here in Alaska. All these fishermen, all those boats that I showed you there, they are doing their own thing. They get a permit to commercial fish. They're not employees of this cannery or fishery. Um, oh, big raven up on the water tower. But anyway, they'll go out and do the fishing and that's where my position comes in on a tender boat. We buy the fish. We're employed by the cannery. We buy the fish from the fishermen that are bound by contract for the season with the cannery and then uh, we take the fish in and deliver to the cannery. So they can stay out, keep busy fishing, bring in as many fish as they can, and uh, it's kind of a mutual relationship, mutually beneficial. Yeah, we got some blackbirds up on the water tower there, squawking at me. And take a little walk down to where the water comes from. This is where they pump out all the water to supply the whole cannery with their water. Comes up right out of the lake there. They have some sort of filtration system and then stored up in the water tower and delivered down to the cannery as needed. Take showers with that water. I don't drink it. I don't drink any of the tap water because this is where it comes from. I'm not sure if it's safe to drink or not. But that's it. So again, Naknek, Alaska is pretty remote. The closest town here that's drivable to is King Salmon. That's about, oh, maybe 15, 18 miles down the road. And then also Katmai National Park is near here as well. You can get there from King Salmon. But that's about it. Everywhere else to get out of here, you would need to hop on a plane or a boat. All right, so we'll go back down to the cannery and look around a little more. All right, we're coming back down into the heart of the cannery here. This red building is the office. We ever need to track down our supervisor she's usually in there very very busy woman she does a great job handles a lot of stress and still is very personable she's a pleasure to work with her name is angela and then behind this big trailer here there's actually a little store that has oh you can get candy bars and soda pops and sweatshirts and boots as well as any personal toiletries you would need up in this building here. That's a store, has very limited hours. And then down this way is the river and the docks. So we'll head down there. We'll show you the big generator room that uh, supplies power to this whole place. Red Salmon Company, established in 1901. Again, most of these buildings all here. Here's another bunkhouse. They all have names. That one's called the Why Not. It helps you be able to get around here. And we're gonna start to hear a lot of noise. This is the Red Salmon Powerhouse. There's a giant generator in this room, again, that supplies power to the whole place. I would assume they have a backup generator in, the, in there as well. And this big trailer here, that delivers a lot of the food for all the workers, as well as what they'll supply to us for the boat. And we'll take a walk down to the docks. All right, so here we are down at the docks. This is the Naknek River. We actually just got our boat in the water. I wanted to film that and show that, but I actually got sick, as do most people that show up here. That's kind of part of the job. We show up here and everything is just moldy and dank and it's, uh, yeah, not the healthiest, safest work environment. Uh, like this railing, like I would not put my weight on this. Chances are it would just break through. So uh, yeah, you gotta be real careful around here. I kind of just come up here just for the money and try not to get too involved with all that politically. And uh, yeah, a lot goes on down here. Just beyond here is where they actually process the fish. I'll try to get down there a little closer. But this is where all the fishing boats uh, kind of get situated, all the tender boats like I work on. Again, we're right over here, the smaller one next to the walrus. So we're getting geared up, getting ready to go. And that's that. Okay, so here we are on the boat. This is the galley and my bunk down here. In future videos, we'll be giving you a bigger tour of this whole boat and how it's set up. But uh, for now, we have cleaned up the galley in here. We did quite a bit of scraping and painting to make it a little bit nicer in here. Again, when we first come in here, it's quite moldy and mildewy. So we go in and uh, bleach everything, let it air out for a couple days, get some paint in, let it air out some more. And now it's uh, pretty much livable. So my bunk is actually underneath here. 
use this blanket because we're in Alaska. It stays light most of the summer. Gives me a little bit of uh, darkness and privacy in there. And then our galley table here is where I spend a lot of time hanging out. My little editing station here. I got my laptop out. A radio. We get one radio station here, public radio station out of Dillingham, Alaska. And a little sink area here. And this is a diesel stove, an old Dickinson. And the Captain Jest uh, rebuilt this. He put a new burn pot in there, which it badly needed. So it's burning nice and clean. Leave that pretty much on 24-7. Keeps things nice and dry in here. Put a new pipe on it. And then that's our water heater that works through convection. These pipes actually go in the back of the stove and you can see the coils in here around the burn pot. So it works by convection and pumps the cold water through and keeps nice hot water in here for our showers and doing dishes and that. And that is, I can barely put my hand on there for a couple seconds. Nice and hot. And then we have a little another area here with our microwave and coffee pot. Pretty small fridge for three people, but we make the best of it. We have yet to get all of our food for the boat. We're still eating up in the galley. They have given us some dry goods. We're starting to get stocked up. And then the engine room is down there. Again, we'll give a bigger tour of this boat in another video. And I'm getting to wrap things up here for the evening. Uh, where we're at here docked, I'll give you a quick glimpse. We are tied off to another tender boat at the dock there and we do go dry when the tide goes out we are dry sitting on the mud so it puts us at a pretty good lean which makes it a little uncomfortable you're always kind of working to stay upright I'll give you an idea of how much of a lean we're at it's a roll of tape So when the tide comes in, we'll start to float and level out. Uh, fortunately tonight, the tide will come in around midnight. So through the night, we'll be nice and level. And then uh, of course it'll go back out again. So we spend half of our time at a lean like this. It's a little uncomfortable. Uh, fortunately, the way my bunk is situated, it actually puts me, I have my head up there. So my head is just a little above my feet, which I prefer. So yeah, that's the situation here again. Um, be making some more videos in the future explaining a little bit more about the details of the job, how I got this job, how you could get a job similar to this if you're interested. But for now, we're going to wrap it up. Appreciate you guys checking the video out, and we'll see you soon in the next video. Take care. Peace.